loner, who got fired from his job after experiencing the discrimination that comes with being from a low-class family. Hoping to be more powerful, he explores a hidden dungeon, determined to be the strongest hero in the world. Before this, Nor wakes up excitedly, prepared to begin his new job as a librarian because he has decided to pursue a career instead of going to high school. The moment Noir steps out to the living room, he sees his father bowing in front of him and his mother crying. They inform him that he would not be able to work as a librarian because a higher-class nobleman's son got it instead. Disappointed, Noir tells his father to rise up as he does not respect him. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But he begins to think about what he would do. At that moment, his younger sister Alice comes in angrily to ask who took her brother's position, but she also feels sorry for him. She hugs him by pressing her melons against his chest. Did you pray today? Telling him to take the Hero Academy's entrance examination. Nor thinks about his sister's suggestion and tells her that a low life like himself would not be able to pass. Hearing this, Alice encourages him to go for the exam and promises to take care of him, even if he fails. Later, having accepted to go for the examination, Nora leaves the house. As he walks through the streets, he suddenly hears his name. Looking back, all he sees are two huge cannons coming his way. He realizes these beauties belong to his childhood friend, Emma. Even though Emma was born into a higher noble class, their families have been friends. When Emma catches up with Nor, she tells him how excited she is for them to both start their work as a librarian. However, when Nor breaks the news to her, she becomes angry and disappointed. He sees how her mood changes and tries to cheer her up. Then she tells him of the good news she has on how he would be able to use his skill. Hearing this, Nor recounts how only his skill is the Great Sage skill, which allows him to know few things about the present and the future, as he has an access to ask the Great Sage any question. However, Nor is not able to use the power because, after summoning the Great Sage, he would have a huge headache, which would make him wish for death. But Emma tells him she found a passage which states that any time the Great Sage of old get a terrible headache from his skill, he would demand kisses from his wives. Hearing this, Nor becomes confused, but Emma tells him it must be the way the old sage avoided the headaches caused by his skill. Then she also asks him if he wants to try it, and he agrees. Emma suggests they go to a private place to try it, and soon they go to a secluded place, and on getting there, they kiss. Yep. During this moment, Nor uses his skill to ask the great sage how he can become stronger to pass the entrance exam, and the sage tells him to explore a hidden dungeon not far from him, and he would be able to defeat some monsters to get strong. After using his skill, Nor gets the headache as usual and suddenly kisses Emma. She becomes embarrassed, but he continues to kiss her, with the excuse that his headache is not gone yet. Nor looks for the dungeon and goes there alone, and with the help of the spell given to him by the great sage, he is able to enter the dungeon. Inside, he suddenly hears a voice that continues to direct him to the second floor, where he sees a lady tied down with chains with her eyes closed. Nor looks at the lady who has beautiful rice cakes. He becomes scared but realizes that she is the owner of the voice that has been directing him. There, she tells him to touch her forehead, which when he does, he is able to look into her past where she introduces herself as Olivia and explains how she got trapped with the chains while trying to conquer the dungeon. She also tells him that the chains are cursed and if anyone tries to remove the chains from her body, she would die. Also, she adds that she has been stuck in the dungeon for 200 years, without thinking she would be able to see someone who would hear and talk to her. She asks about what he is doing in the dungeon, and when he explains why he needs to be stronger, she promises to give him her skill, because she would not be using it anyways. Then she tells him to place his forehead on hers so as to pass him her skills, which he did, leading his mind to be at peace. Olivia tells him to address her as his master, and explains that he now has a creative skill, a bestow skill and an editor skill, which he can use to create, take or remove anything he wishes to, whether on himself or on another person. Oh my god! Wow! Olivia also adds that he would need to have life points in order to use his skills, and how he would get those life points is by eating good food, or becoming rich, or doing something to satisfy himself on the opposite gender. Hearing this, Nora tells Olivia that she is asking him to do ridiculous things, but she announces to him that he would be a dead meat once his life points reach zero. Nora goes back home after testing out his creative skills, which makes him reduce his life points, but on getting home, he gets pampered by Alice, and this helps him gain more life points due to the satisfaction he got. 
The following afternoon, Nora waits for Emma as he decides to ask her for help so as to get his life points but when she shows up, he becomes surprised as she emerges in a beautiful cloth which reveals her cleavage. Nora tells her his honest opinion about her dress and she tells him of how she is aware of everyone looking at her giant cannons. He asks for a hug and when she gives him a hug, he is able to feel her assets on his chest. After getting more life points, Nora proceeds to create a discerning eye skill and while he tests it on Emma, she tells him how stiff her back is from carrying the load on her chest. Then Nora decides to use his skills to reduce her melons. Having realized that her chest is flat, Emma becomes angry and Nora immediately regrets his actions as he immediately returns it back to its normal size. The next day, Nora goes to the Hero Academy, but on getting there, he sees Emma who tells him that she has quit her job to be with him because they are friends. There they are told to form a team, but a lot of people do not want to associate themselves with Noor. But a lady named Lenore comes to meet Noor and Emma to become a team. The instruction given to them is to find rare materials which must be submitted to calculate their points. But when they are told to begin, Noor tells Emma he would look for the materials on his own. Later that day, Nora goes to the dungeon and decides to fight some monsters, but he is faced with a deadly reaper, which he is able to defeat with his skills. Leaving the dungeon, he goes to meet Olivia with the skull of the reaper, but she tells him it may not be of any help to him. When the results are being announced, Nora and his team members begin to worry as their name was not mentioned in the third and second place, but to their surprise, their names are mentioned as the first place, because they brought the rarest materials. Nora goes to ask Olivia why she told him the skull wouldn't count, and she tells him the skull means nothing compared to the demons she had defeated. However, Nora takes the good news home and his family becomes excited until they all learn that there is an entry fee of 300,000 rels. Hearing the good news, Alice jumps on Nora as she tells him that she wants to get some of his luck, but Nora tells his family about the fee and they are to pay it within a week. Nora's father begins to cry as he tells Nora that he would not be able to provide the money, but Nora assures them that he would get the money. Nor goes to the dungeon to tell Olivia about the money, and she suggests that he fights more monsters and sell their rare materials, but Nor dismisses the idea as he tells her he does not want to attract more attention to himself after the entrance examination. He also tells her how he told Lenore to take credit for killing the Reaper as people would not believe that he was the one who killed it. Hearing this, Olivia advises that he should go work at the Adventurer's Guild button. Getting to the guild, Nor becomes intimidated by a huge man at first, but he is saved by the attendant of the guild named Lola. Nor begins to look at Lola as he admires her privileged white skin and her huge melons but Lola asks him if it is his first time at the guild. Lola begins to explain how the Adventurer's Guild works and also tells him that he has to register by putting down his skills in a form, but Nor is so excited as he wonders why Lola smells so good. Seeing what Nor wrote about his skills, Lola tells him it is impossible for him to be Olivia's successor, as she brings out a discerning tone and tells Nor to place his hand on it so that she would be sure. Nor asks her what she is going to do if he is right, and she tells him she would lift her skirt up and tell him that she loves him. Wait a minute! Nor places his hand on the tone and it reveals that he has Olivia's skills. At that moment, Lola raises her skirt to tell Nor that she loves him, and as Nor sees her underwear, his life points increase. Lola immediately gets down to business as she asks Nor about the quests he would like to take, and he replies that he needs to get the sum of 300,000 rels within a week. To start with, Lola shows him he would have to catch some rainbow grasshoppers, and as she tells her that he would take the task, she tells him he would be able to do it as he has the right skills to guide him. Also, she adds that she finds capable men attractive, which makes Nor shocked as she doubted him a few minutes before. Nor goes to find the grasshoppers, and before he uses his great sage ability, he wishes that Emma was with him so that he would be able to kiss her to stop his headache. But he improvised by creating headache immunity, and when he asks the sage, the sage tells him where the grasshoppers are. Nor captures the grasshoppers but suddenly hears his name and when he checks, he sees Emma who suddenly tries to hit him. But he dodges it and becomes excited as he has been waiting for her. He also becomes more excited as he sees how her melons are dangling. Did you pray today? Then she accuses him of breaking the promise they made to each other when they were small and he apologizes for not telling her that he wants to become an adventurer and also bribes her with a kiss. Yep. Nor and Emma go back to the guild with the grasshoppers and Lola gives Nor 
a reward of 250,000 rels. Then she goes close to him to tell him he is a fine man. On seeing this, Emma becomes angry and tells Noor that she would also become an adventurer too, so that she would be able to follow him on the quest. The two ladies begin to glare at each other, and when they begin to give each other reasons to be closer to Noor, Noor becomes embarrassed as he sees that the other adventurers in the guild are already staring at them. To settle this, he immediately tells the both of them what they wanted to hear as he assured them not to make a side higher than the other. The ladies sit and Lola tells Noor that they should have dinner later but Emma gets angry as she yells at Lola for trying to seduce Noor in her presence. Later that day, Emma and Noor set out to go and capture the huge monster-sized rabbit. On their way, Emma advises Noor to stay away from Lola, as she is planning to dissect him. The two friends are suddenly attacked by goblins, and as Emma tries to defeat them, the goblins get killed by the huge rabbit monster and Emma tells Noor not to worry as she would make sure she defeats the monster because Lola would be all over him if he does all of the work. Emma uses all of her powers to try to defeat the rabbit, but realizes that she is unable to defeat it. Then Noor immediately distracts the rabbit while he takes Emma into hiding. Noor decides to use his powers to upgrade Emma's powers, but realizes that he does not have enough life points to do so. Then he asks Emma if he can nibble on her ear. Emma agrees, and as Noor begins to suck on her ears, she becomes uncomfortable and begins to make happy noises, and the noises attract the attention of the huge rabbit to where they are hiding. Noor hurries up to get enough life points and upgrades Emma's skills, enabling them to defeat the huge rabbit. Back at the guild, Noor reports that Emma took down the huge rabbit on her own, while Emma thanks Lola for giving her the opportunity to embark on the quest with Noor. That Noor announces that he has used his skills to teleport the dead rabbit, so that they would be able to eat it. The meat is however shared with the other adventurers as they throw a party on behalf of Noor, and when Lola gives him his payment, he is told to give a speech. After the speech, Noor tells himself he needs to thank Olivia for helping him. Fortunately, Noor and Emma are able to pay their enrollment fee and they both enter the academy but while they talk about how their lives would change, the daughter of Duke Albert Maria passes in front of them and Emma immediately tells Noor to bow his head while she passes. Noor asks Emma who she is and after being told that she is the daughter of the Duke, Noor decides to use his discerning eyes to check her skills. He becomes shocked as he tells Emma that Maria has a curse on her and the cure is to kill her on her 16th birthday, which is not far. The following day when they are supposed to start schoolwork, Alice tells Noor that she would try her best to enter the Hero Academy also the following year. Having left the house, Noor meets with Emma and on their way to school, Emma suggests they have their greeting. Then they both go to a nearby bush and begin to kiss before heading to school. In school, they are all made to wear a badge that would show their rank, and as they enter their classroom, the students begin to ignore Noor as they notice that he is a lowlife, but pay attention to Emma. Suddenly, Maria enters the classroom with her friend Amain and notices Noor. She goes to greet him and recognizes him as part of the team that won first place in their entrance examination. Soon, they are told to go for their first class and on getting there, the students are surprised at how strong their teacher is. The teacher introduces herself as Elma Stongs and also tells them how she was a mercenary before she became a teacher. Elma tells the class she would be teaching them some defensive moves. She picks Noor to show them an example of what she wants to teach them and tells him to try to attack her with his sword, but Noor becomes reluctant, and she tells him that he would not be able to scratch her. Hearing this, Noor uses his discerning eyes on her and sees that she is at level 332 which makes her very strong. Noor immediately draws his sword, and before he is able to attack Elna, she immediately uses a skill to move away from Noor so as to avoid his attack. She calls the technique the back step, that she tells Noor that she would try to attack him, and he should use the same technique she used. Scared, Noor tells her how strong she is, and she tells him how to avoid her, but while he is still thinking about what to do, she immediately attacks him, hitting him hard and making him fall down. Noor begins to cry because he is hurt, which makes Elna heals him and tells him to try it again. Then she tells the class that she would give anybody who is able to avoid her attack a prize they are sure to enjoy. However, Noor stands up and when Elma tries to attack him again, he is able to do the back step. Since he won her, Elma gives him the prize as promised and suddenly sits on his belly while rubbing her rice cakes over his mini sausage. Seeing this, the male students become jealous that Noor is having the time of his life, 
but Nora becomes uncomfortable as he yells in pain. After a while, Elma stands up and Nora realizes he had enjoyed every bit of what Elma did to him, and his life points increased. Then, Emma comes to meet him to ask if he is okay as she is worried if he would start liking Elma's rice cakes instead of her freshly squeezed melons. Later, Elma tells the students they would have to pair up for their next lesson, but when she sees that Nora and Emma try to pair up, she instructs them not to as they are dating but Emma tells her they are not dating yet. Wait a minute! Elma also tells Maria and Amain not to pair up, which makes Maria go to meet Nora to be partners and Emma who is paired with Amain becomes scared as she notices that Maria is getting close to Nora. Elma tells them to throw off each other and Nora tells Maria to throw him off first, but he immediately creates a skill to make her do well and when she throws him off, she suddenly becomes weak and falls down making Nora stick his head in between her melons. Amain sees this and they immediately carry Maria out of the training ground. Then, Nor uses his discerning eyes to check and sees that the curse is the one affecting her, and he begins to wonder if he can use his skills to edit the curse, but he sees that he would need 8,000 life points to do so. Then, he immediately uses the Great Sage skill to ask how he can get enough life points. The Great Sage tells him to line up all the girls and he should start touching their melons one after the other, and if he is able to touch all of them, he would get 2,000 life points. Nor begins to have a huge headache, as he thinks that he would not be able to get the life points that way, but he goes to meet Emma and tells her that they should do their greeting, but when she tries to tell him how embarrassing it would be for them, Nor immediately kisses her. At that moment, Elna meets them and asks them if they know that they are in school. Yep. She immediately begins to chase Nor as she tells him to run 15 laps around the school. After school, Nor and Emma go to the Adventurer's Guild but on getting there, Lola immediately runs away the moment she sees Nor and the second attendant, tells them that she went to fix her makeup because she was not expecting to see Nor. Nor talks to Lola about the curse and how he is planning to help Maria. She then tells him that she has a friend who is a cleric named Luna, but tells him that she does not know why Luna is hiding. There, Nor tells himself that he would use his skills to get rid of Luna's issues so that she would be able to heal Maria. Nor immediately stands up and he begs Lola to introduce him to the cleric, so that they would be able to save Maria before the following week, because that is the day she is supposed to die according to the curse. In the next video, we'll see how Nor gained some new and impressive powers. Also, he meets Lola and Luna, who end up changing his life yet providing him with more huge melons to feed on. At this time, Lola goes to the temple to see Luna but on getting there. She meets her in a room resting because she is tired as she has been healing people all day. She meets Luna, and they both hug. Then, Lola immediately tells her that she wants to discuss an important issue with her. Meanwhile, before meeting the cleric Luna, Nora decides to visit Olivia for some advice, but on getting to the dungeon, he notices that Olivia is angry because he did not visit her, to which he apologizes for, and he tells her about Maria and the curse. Olivia tells him to rely on the cleric as she would be a part elf if she has the power to exorcise. Then Olivia begins to tease Nor as she tells him that he would get a lot of like points if he does satisfying things with other species. Nor asks Olivia how he can get more points and she begins to tell him nasty things that make him feel uncomfortable. Olivia tells Nor that she is only teasing him but tells him there is a skill he can use to get lucky, and it is called Lucky Leather which would make him gain more life points. Nor leaves the dungeon and meets Emma in the city but as he tries to run toward her, he slips and ends up having his face in between her giant cannons. A sudden breeze also blows and Nor begins to see the underwear of the ladies in the street. This makes his life points increase. Seeing this, he tells himself that is the lucky leather, and then he uses his editor's skill to change the skill to make his luck seldom. Emma begins to yell at Nor as she asks him why he is smirking. Yep. Which he tries to explain to her but unknown to them. Lola and Luna have arrived, and they are watching them while they argue. Luna tells Lola how cute she finds Nora to be, as well as adding that he is her type but Lola yells at her to focus on what she is to do. Then, Emma and Nora suddenly stop and they both greet Luna, who tells them that they have a reservation for them to have lunch and discuss. Emma becomes sad as she sees that her only advantage against Luna is her huge melons and she begins to blame herself for making Nora meet Luna. They get to the restaurant, and while eating, Nora tells Luna about the curse on Maria, which Luna reveals that she has met Maria before, but she is unable to lift the curse, because she cannot lift the 16-year-old curse. 
nor becomes suspicious as he thinks Luna has a secret. He uses his discerning eyes to check and realizes that she can lift the curse, but her own lifespan would reduce. After eating, they all feel disappointed as they walk down the street. Then Luna suddenly tells them she would lift the curse, making Lola ask her why as she had told them she does not have the skill. Nor immediately tells Emma and Lola that he would like to have a word with Luna in private, and they both step aside to talk, where he tells her that he knows her lifespan would reduce if she lifts the curse. Luna explains how her mother was also a cleric who devoted her life to saving people, and she wants to do the same. But suddenly while they talk, Luna and Nor hear a loud noise and on getting there. They are told that a wall collapsed and a young boy is trapped under it. They are able to rescue the boy and Luna heals the boy but loses her energy. After, Nora lifts her up as she begins to shiver and tells him she is scared of dying. When Nora checks, he realizes she has a Kawarta skill as well. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Lola takes Luna from Nora and begins to pat her head. Within a few minutes, Luna wakes up and becomes embarrassed but still tries to put on a show that she would save Maria. Then, Nor tells her that she would not die because she would use his skills to edit the condition that her lifespan would not reduce. He tells them of how he would change it so that Luna's money and finances would reduce instead. Also, Nor tells them how he needs life points to use his skills, surprising them when they learn of how he gets his life points. Nor tells them they would have to make up enough money for Luna before lifting the curse, and he asks Lola if there is something they can think of that would get him 2,000 life points. Lola informs them that there is an event that would fetch them money and help Nor get like points at the same time. She tells them of an event called the Harem Pride event, which is held every weekend by a noble who has been rejected by his wife. That weekend, they all go to the Harem Pride event, where the audience are violent because they have all been treated badly by women. The event starts and each team showcases the women they have and the audience would give harsh comments about them while the noble scores them. Nor becomes scared as he sees how harsh and angry the audience are, telling himself he has to go home. At the Duke's house, Maria wakes up in the middle of the night and begins to complain of chest pain. Then her friend Amin comes in and begins to sob as she prays that someone comes to save Maria from the curse for her not to lose her life. Meanwhile, at the Harem Pride event, Noor and the girls watch as other people get insulted by the audience. But Emma tells Noor that she wants to go home as she cannot take the insults. Lola tells Emma to go home as she would stay with Noor, but on hearing this, Emma gets angry and tells Noor she is strong and can take in the harsh insults from the audience. After a series of insults, a particular team emerges and they have the highest score because they are able to captivate the audience. Lola tells Noor and the girls that they have to beat the team because they are from a neighboring adventurer's guild. Noor begins to think of what will happen if they do not win, but he tells himself he would not lose his confidence. Soon, they are called to showcase their beauty but Emma is scared. Nor immediately blows a little breeze in her ear and tells her that she would do great. Emma becomes confident and immediately jumps to the auditorium, where she introduces herself, and the audience are unable to talk as they all fix their eyes on her giant cannons as they jump rhythmically. The audience claps for Emma, and Luna also goes in to introduce herself followed by Lola. While the three ladies talk, the audience becomes excited as they all beg to be closer to the ladies. The noble scores them and realizes that they are the winner. However, the noble tells them that before they can be given the prize, they must put on a show according to three categories, and the things must be done to the male in their group. The ladies hold a meeting without Nor, where they all decide and agree on what to do according to the three categories they are given. Nor sits like a little baby waiting to be attended to by his mother while the ladies talk. Suddenly, the noble announces the beginning of the show, and as he gives them the categories, they all act and become closer to Nor, who enjoys every bit of it. The audience also witness this, and they all become hysterical as they wish to be Nor. But at the end of the last category, the noble begins to cry as he longs for his wife and daughter, and gives them their prize of one million rels. Nor and the ladies run out of the arena excitedly as they win, but after celebrating for a while, they all head to the Duke's house to heal Maria before she dies. On getting to the mansion, they see a main outside crying, as she tells them of how Maria had held the pain in her heart since she was small. She also adds that the curse was from a sorcerer who fought with her ancestor, and the curse affected her only. A main informs Nor of how Maria was impressed when she found out that he was the one who took first in the entrance exam. 
After speaking to Amain, Noor and the ladies are escorted to Maria's room, where they find the Duke and his wife. Noor introduces himself and explains why he wants to save Maria, but the Duke and his wife remember Luna, who immediately explains why she could not save Maria before. Noor explains how they have devised a way to avoid Luna's death and also save Maria at the same time. Maria sits up weakly to thank Noor, as she also kisses him to show her appreciation as well. Wait a minute! Which angers Emma and Lola while they peep from the door. Then, Noor holds Maria's hand as he tells Luna to lift the curse. Luna lifts the curse, and after a few minutes, Maria feels better and everyone in the room becomes emotional after Noor tells them he has used his discerning eye skill to confirm if the curse is gone. Maria thanks Luna for helping her, and also tells Noor that she would spend the rest of her life repaying him. Noor and the ladies leave the mansion and Noor begins to feel excited as he is able to help Maria. But suddenly, he hears Emma and Lola telling each other that Maria has fallen for Noor. Just then, Luna also tells them she has fallen for Noor as well. The following day, Noor visits Olivia and explains how he and the girls were able to save Maria. But Olivia tells him that she is the only one who has not gotten a kiss from him. Olivia tells him that he owes her because he would not be able to save Maria without the powers she gave him. Then, Noor goes closer to Olivia and gives her a kiss on the forehead. Olivia becomes dissatisfied and tells Noor that he should learn more and come and give her another kiss later. Later on, after healing Maria, Noor and the girls get 100 million rels each, causing them to be excited. Then, Luna tells them that she would use her own money to fix up her clinic, but Noor wonders what to do with his own. Emma suddenly suggests that he uses his money to open a shop so that he would be able to sell rare monster materials, just like they discussed before. Lola immediately interrupts Emma and tells her that Noor needs her accounting and calculating skills because Emma's melons cannot do calculations. Emma becomes angry about this, but Luna tells the two girls to stop arguing as she would be with Noor instead. Hearing this, the girls begin to get angry at each other. Then, Noor tells them that he would see them later and immediately leaves. Noor takes the money home and explains how he got it to his family, and they all congratulate him. Alice asks Noor what he would use the money for, and he tells her he does not know yet. Then, Noor's father tells Noor that he would not let him be the only breadwinner in their family. He suggests to Noor that he should keep the money with him, but Noor tells him he is aware that his father would squander the money in the casino. Noor then tells his family that he wants to open a shop, and he would be in charge of collecting the goods to sell, but his father asks him to hire him, which he agrees but adds that his father should take care of the paperwork for the government. Then Alice tells Noor that she would keep an eye on their father so that he would not pocket the money. Later, Noor visits the dungeon to conquer more floors, but on getting to where Olivia is, he calls her and she does not respond. Then he begins to run his hands from her hands to her armpit, but he stops when he touches her beautiful melons and she makes a happy noise. Olivia tells Noor that she is pretending for him because he did not come and greet her. Then he apologizes for that and tells her of his intention to conquer more parts of the dungeon so as to get materials to sell in his new shop. Olivia suggests that Noor uses his skill to create a dungeon elevator skill so that he would be able to conquer more parts of the dungeon. She also recommends a skill called blinding light so as to help him defeat more monsters by making them blind. Hearing this, Noor gets the skills and decides to test the blinding light skill. Then he forgets to close his eyes and Olivia makes fun of him as she calls him a klutz. Noor explores the dungeon and after getting nothing in the second and third floor, he proceeds to the fifth floor and suddenly sees some dead monsters and animals. But he walks further and he senses a presence. Suddenly, Noor sees a huge pitch black lion with a growing tulip in its head. He tries to use his discerning eyes, but he does not get any information about the lion. He uses his blinding light skill and tries to escape with his elevator skills. But as he is about to run away, the lion talks and tells him that it wants to speak with him. Oh my god! Wow! Nor becomes surprised as the lion tells him that he has good skills for him to be able to get to that part of the dungeon. Also, the lion tells Nor he needs to help him to look for someone on the sixth floor, and he would give him a ride in return. While riding towards the sixth floor, the lion tells Noor that his name is Tegerson, and he is named by his friend, whom he is trying to look for on the sixth floor. On getting to the sixth floor, Tegerson tells Noor of how he and his friend had entered the dungeon years ago, but his friend told him to stay on the fifth floor while he conquered the sixth floor on his own. 
Nor asks Tigerson how many years he had spent waiting for his friend, and he answers that he has waited for 350 years. Tigerson continues to tell Nor that his friend named Vashel is an elf, and he had promised to wait for him on the fifth floor because he believes that a promise to a friend is absolute. Nor agrees to help Tigerson. Then he enters the sixth floor but realizes how dark it is, and he immediately uses his life point to create a night vision skill. Suddenly, Nor sees a figure and when the figure comes closer, he realizes it is a zombie but when he uses his discerning eyes, he sees that it is a sextable zombie. Yep. Nor tries to run for his life, but realizes that the zombies are many and notices that the zombies are dividing their body parts into six while chasing him. Nor fortunately is able to enter a room and closes the door behind him. Then he hears another voice, which when he checks, he sees another zombie but notices that the zombie is different from the ones he had seen before. Nor immediately recognizes the zombie as Vashel and realizes that he must have been infected by the zombies. However, Nor heals Vashel and tells him of how Tigerson had sent him to look for him. Vashel becomes sad as he feels sorry for wasting Tigerson's time out of his little lifespan. Then he proceeds to tell Nor how he met Tigerson and randomly gave him a name which he fell in love with. Vashel decides to meet Tigerson, and when they get outside the sixth floor, Tigerson and Vashel hugs each other and Vashel tells Tigerson that they should give up conquering the dungeon as he would love to go back to his hometown where his lover might still be waiting for him. Tigerson accepts and they both escort each other to the entrance of the dungeon followed by Nor. On getting outside, Vashel reminds Tigerson how he would not be accepted in his homeland and Tigerson agrees to let him go back home. Vashel thanks Nor and Tigerson before leaving for his hometown. Outside, Tigerson tells Nor that he has to go back into the dungeon because he has forgotten something. Nor goes back to the fifth floor because Tigerson looks suspicious, and when he gets there, he sees Tigerson crying because of his friend Vashel leaving him. Nor feels sorry for Tigerson and asks to be his friend, telling him he would take him to his house, which Tigerson agrees to, and they both ride home. On getting home, Nora's father becomes scared of the talking huge beast Nor has brought home but Alice and their mother are fine with it. While Nora's mother tells them that she would make a huge dinner, Alice plays with Tigerson. While Nora's father asks Nor why the lion has a tulip on his head, and Nor tells him that the tulip is the lion's sausage. Alice begins to play with the tulip on Tigerson's head, making him begin to feel on top of the world. But Alice continues to rub the tulip in a style that Tigerson suddenly roars. The next day, Emma wakes up leaving Nora thrilled at the sight of her cannons. He gets carried away by it. Did you pray today? And she immediately refers to him as a perv, just before hugging him. This causes him to receive some life points. They chat for a while and head out to Miss Maria's house to see if she has recovered fully. She tells him she is better, and it is all because of Nora as she hugs him, making Emma very jealous. Nora immediately remembers that they are going to have an examination and becomes surprised. At school, the teacher comes in and begins to tell them about all they need to know about their exams, as well as the materials they will need to pass the exams. The students become very worried as the materials they would be given to look for will be very difficult. Emma immediately tells Nor after the class that they will go in search of the materials together for it to be easy for the both of them. Then, Nor realizes they have someone they can rely on and goes to see Lola. Getting to her, Nora sees that she is having a bit of trouble and she tells him Sarah stole her adventures twice. Using his eyes, Nora sees that Sarah is getting higher than Lola, which makes Lola tell them that Sarah seduces all the adventurers to her side, which is how she is getting points on the chart. Nora begins to wonder how she is doing that, making Lola inform him that Sarah is doing lewd things like exposing her melons. Angry, Sarah asks her if she has any proof of what she is saying but Lola tells her she does not have any proof of anything. Because of this, Sarah tells Lola to come and beat her at least once, if she is so mad about it. However, they make a bet where Sarah tells Lola that if she wins, she will have one of her adventures. Then she goes over to Noor to tell him that she cannot wait for the day she becomes his receptionist, making her huge melons hit his chest. Noor becomes very shocked and begins to wonder who she is using his special eye to view her skill, only to see that it is so specific, which is why she is popular. Sarah leaves the place after seeing that Lola will never have proof and her adventurers have all been disciplined. Nor begins to think of what will happen if they lose and begins to daydream about Sarah's return to the Garden of Eden. 
Then, Nora decides to help Lola with her challenge by telling her to follow him on his quest, since they would want to gather up some materials for school. Luna also accepts to go with them as she has been operating solo since and would love to be his slave. They head out and begin to complete Lola's tasks, one after the other, while they gather materials for school too. However, they also draw out a plan on how they will take down a dragon and immediately use the money that has been gathered from the duke to get some weapons that will be needed to fight the dragon. Nor also gathered life points by getting close to the three girls, who also see that they have gotten enough skill to fight the dragon and begin to head to Treasure Mountain where the dragons live. They arrive at the home of the dragon, where Nor asks his great sage to tell him where the closest dragon is and from the report given back. He sees that the dragon is closer than he has thought. Nor suddenly begins to have a headache, and Emma immediately rushes to him, and gives him a kiss to relieve him of his headache. Nor tells them he knows where the dragon is and they immediately set their plan in motion. They dug up a hole and put the long spears that they have gotten inside them, and used cloth and sand to cover it up, so that it would not be noticed by the dragon. Then Nor goes to the cave where the dragon is and uses his eye to get the abilities of the dragon. He also sees that they will have to follow the plan they have and picks up a stone to throw at the dragon, which hits its face and wakes it up. Seeing that the dragon is very huge, Nor begins to run away from it, but sees that the dragon is getting closer to him. Then he approaches their trap, and he immediately jumps over it, making the dragon fall into the pit. Immediately, Luna and Emma rush at the dragon and begin to stab it in multiple places so as to weaken it, and Nor immediately picks up a spear to join them and almost gets struck by the attack of the dragon which blood him a bit. Finally, the dragon falls to the ground, and the girl rushes after Nor, thinking he is dead, making Luna give him a healing shot, which makes him feel better. They then stand him up and take a look at the fallen dragon, seeing that they have won. At the school, the other students were surprised to see an actual dragon as Nor submitted all they would need for the exam. Then he goes to see the announcement of the results and sees that Lola has passed Sarah. But Sarah comes in and tells them to add her remaining points, and they all see that her points have passed what they expected. At that moment, they notice she is cheating and begin to tell the men that it is not fair. Lola, however, takes Noor to another room and begins to undress, almost exposing her melons, but brings out a Touch Me coupon and hands it to him, asking if he would like to redeem it, which he answers positively. She suddenly pushes him to the bed and covers his eyes as she begins to touch him. This action surprises Nor as they begin to talk about the Adventurer's Guild until she then kisses him and ends his treatment. Later, Nor goes to the dungeon to tell Olivia about how strong he can get and how he can combine magic skills that he has previously. At the dungeon, Nor tries to tear away his abilities but sees that he has gotten stronger and thanks his master. Then he goes up a step where he sees the sun in a forest and begins to wonder if it is the seventh floor. Seeing that the seventh floor is a forest, Nor begins to think someone recreated it there. Then, he sees a pack of wolves and realizes their level is higher than his, meaning he needs to turn back immediately as he is no match for them. On his way, he sees a small girl, whom he notices resembles a small version of Emma, and begins to wonder what Emma's young version is looking for in the forest. He begins to wonder if she is an illusion and uses his eyes to check her skill, but notices she is sensitive about the forest. Seeing how powerful Nor is, the girl tells him she has a request, and if nothing is done, she is going to die. She immediately begins to beg him and falls to the ground. Nor agrees to hear her out as he is also on a quest to help his own receptionist. The girl begins by telling him that a monster is sucking on her mana as she is a spirit tree and cannot move. Therefore, if he helps her defeat the monster, she will tell him where the two treasure chests are and will also show him the way to the eighth floor. Thinking about it, Nor knows if he can get more treasures, he will be able to help Lola win. Then, he immediately asks her about the demon, for him to know what he is getting himself into. To do this, the girl takes him to see her real body, where he notices the golden bee that is sucking on her body. He tries to check what level the bee is in and sees that it is at a higher level than he is, which makes him afraid. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. Seeing that Nor cannot be of help to her, she decides to thank him for the effort. Suddenly, Nora sees the golden bee sucking off mana from the tree and notices it is affecting the girl, which begins to get him worried. At that moment, Nora notices that her real body is falling apart as she immediately offers to help him reach the eighth floor. Seeing this, Nora tells her he is willing to help her as he begins to feel guilty for trying to ignore her. 
There she notices Noor bleeding and begins to kiss him, telling him it will heal faster if she licks it, and continues to kiss him. Noor begins to feel weird thinking about what his master, Olivia, would say if he is caught in this situation. He immediately goes to see Olivia to tell her about the bee and begins to ask how he can defeat it, but she advises him to ignore it, as it will be difficult for him to beat the bee. Hearing this, Noor tells her he cannot allow the tree spirit to die, as it looks like a very close friend of his, and it is going to hunt him, as he will not be able to smile at his friend again. Olivia eventually agrees but tells him not to die as she will go to hell to seek him if he does. Noor becomes surprised and asks her why she did not mention heaven. She tells him she is a bad girl and will be going to hell, making Noor surprised. Then, Noor begins his plan but tells Dory, Emma's young self, to go as things will get dangerous. She immediately kisses him and tells him not to die as she hurries off. Wait a minute! Noor then picks up a stone and tries to get the attention of the wolves so they can pursue him to the nest of the bee. He throws the stone and the wolves begin to pursue him towards the nest, giving him assurance that his plan is going as he wants it to. Suddenly, he notices that the bee is not at its nest, but sucking on the tree again. Then he sees Dory on the floor while they are being pursued by the wolves. He begins to think of what to do and immediately, he uses the target skill to switch attention of the wolves to the bee, so he can go look out for Dory. The wolves begin to battle the bee but it manages to take out the wolves. Nor then uses a water and lightning strike to take out the bee and tells Dory it is all over. Seeing this, Dory apologizes for not being able to help, but Noor tells her he got more points thanks to her, because they were together. Then she takes Noor to where he can get the items she promised him, and goes in to get it for him since it is tight for him to enter. She brings it out, and she tells him she doesn't know what they are for, which he uses his eyes to check and realizes they are very useful items. Grateful, Noor thanks her and promises to bring her yummy foods the next time he comes back. However, Noor heads back and gives the chip back to Lola as they head for the announcement of the winner between Lola and Sarah. There, they begin to count the chips, one after the other, and it comes down to Lola and Sarah. They continue to count and suddenly, Lola is seen to have more chips, making her the winner and queen of the receptionist. Immediately, Sarah begins to feel bad about it, which makes Noor encourage her that coming second is not a bad thing. Seeing that Noor understands her, Sarah gives him a map to her house which gets Lola angry and begins to chase her around. Then Noor hands Emma the other treasure he found from the forest. Emma puts the treasure in her mouth and immediately notices power flowing through her and begins to test them out, making Noor realize she is getting good at it. At that moment, she asks him if he would like to go to a party with her and Noor, who knows that the party is for nobles, begins to wonder what she plans on doing there. She, however, tells him she wants to dance and would want him to be her partner. Noor refuses at first, but begins to feel bad after seeing Emma rush off, stating that he would not care if she was taken away by another boy and dreadful things are done to her. Later, Noor goes home and sees that everyone is unhappy, because his father was not given a place to open a shop to sell their materials as their family are not nobles. This happens to be the main reason why he was hesitant to go to the party with Emma. Then he tells his father not to worry and asks if he has clothes suitable for a party. His father goes in and gets an old suit that has had wine spilled on it for years. Noor sees that it is not good for him and decides to go buy another one. Eventually, Noor goes to the party only to see that it has started and everyone is tending to their various affairs. There he sees a lord who has known him since he was little and begins to remind him of how he wet his pants. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Hearing this, Noor gets embarrassed and tells him not to mention the incident anymore and proceeds to ask where Emma is. The Lord thinks Emma has told him about the party but sees that she has not, which makes Noor begin to wonder what he is talking about, until he sees Emma looking all beautiful. Suddenly, the host of the party comes out to tell them about the phantom thief that everyone has been talking about, making Noor very surprised. The host tells them they have nothing to be worried about, as the thief is after his mermaid's tear, but that cannot happen because adventurers from the greatest guild are guarding it. However, Noor notices that Emma is acting in a strange way and asks her if she is scared by the announcement, but she informs him that it is nothing, and it is almost time for the dance. Noor sees that the dance is done according to their ranks, and him and Emma will be last. Suddenly, Mike, an old friend of Emma, comes in and sees that she is very beautiful. He asks her to court her, but she refuses as she is with someone else. Then he notices Noor and asks who he is, and on seeing that he is a baronet, he proceeds to challenge him for Emma, 
who immediately stands up and tells him she does not agree to it. Confidently, Nora tells Mike that he accepts his challenge as the cheer from the crowd will be the determining factor for who wins. Mike agrees to go first, and Nora realizes that his dancing skills are top-notch, but he has to win him so as not to lose Emma to Mike. Then, he uses his skills to get creative in dancing and heads to the floor to begin dancing, but becomes nervous. Emma tells him to take his mind off it, and they begin to dance. The audience sees that they look lovely together, making Mike very angry. After the dance, the audience gives them a wonderful cheer as they both step out, seeing that they look cute together. There, Nora stares into Emma's eyes and tries to kiss her, but suddenly the lights are out and he can see the Phantom Thief. The Phantom Thief tells them she has come for the Mermaid Tear. At that moment, Nora could remember why Emma said she would be taken away by someone. Suddenly, the thief jumps down and takes Emma away from Nora, who tries to stop the thief but gets kicked away. The Phantom Thief takes the Mermaid Tear, as well as kidnap Emma and leaves the hall. Seeing this, the adventurers try to go after them, splitting themselves into two and Nora tells them he would like to go with them, which they agree to. They begin to go after the Phantom Thief, whom Nora could see has a very strong summoning ability. Suddenly, the thief summons a firebird to help her in the fight. They begin to fight, and Noor realizes he does not have enough life points and tries to use her weakness of lightning against her. He firstly helps out the other adventurers and deceives the phantom thief to fall into a trap he has set and immediately combines water and lightning to take out the phantom thief. At that moment, the other member of the Lamu adventurer arrives, whom Noor notices is wearing a strange earring and decides to check his abilities through his eyes but does not detect anything. Suddenly, Noor is hit and tied down by the adventurer, who plans to make Emmett his wife as he has been watching her for a long time. Despite the gravity of attacks on him, Noor still tries to go save her, and surprisingly, he is able to receive a little help from Emma, who has regained consciousness, which makes Noor able to knock the adventurer out. Finally safe, Emma apologizes to him and hopes he does not see that she is dirty, which Noor tells her she is not and proceeds to kissing her. However, they return back to the party where he is thanked by her father, who also helps Nora's father get a shop where they can sell rare materials. They all become happy and Emma agrees to help out with the remodeling. Alice begins to give Nora a very bad look because of this, making Finder eyes scary. The next day at school, Elna tells the students about their special lesson and informs them they will be going on a vacation where there will be hot springs. On their way to the hot spring, Nora notices that Emma is excited about it and tells her not to get into the water as the boys in their class have plans to peep at the bodies of the girls. Hearing this, Emma tells him she is okay being seen by the boy, which gets Noor agitated, but she tells him it was only a joke. Then, Emma tells the girls that Noor will protect them from the other boys, which he is not so sure about. There, Elna comes to tell them there are a lot of monsters in Amora, therefore, they'd have to get their lines and formations ready, and she begins to walk ahead. Hearing her, the students begin to wonder what she is talking about as they also continue on their way to the spring, while Nora sees that his troubles will not just end there. Suddenly, a classmate of his immediately tells him to stop, as there is a trap close by. Then he uses a stone to reveal that there is a pit trap nearby, which Nora thanks him for and begins to wonder who might have put the trap there for them. Suddenly, they see a pixie and Elna tells them the hole is dug by bandits, telling them she has a shortcut. Meanwhile, Nora sees that Elma has chosen not to say anything as she sees that the pixie has a monster puppetry skill, and also, it seems the task is up to the students. They arrive at a dark cave which the students begin to wonder why it is. Suddenly, Nora draws out his sword, making the pixie wonder why he has drawn his sword and begs him to put it back. Nora also notices the holes in the wall and tells the pixie that she has a puppetry skill, and she wishes to deceive them so they can be captured. The pixie immediately realizes that her cover is blown and tells the lizard men to capture the students. The students immediately attack them at once and begin to take down the lizard men, as Nora becomes surprised at how they are able to take out the monsters. The pixie tries to escape, but Nora traps her and she falls to the ground. Seeing their victory, Elna begins to talk to them, but at that moment, one of the boys immediately sights the spring from afar, and they begin to celebrate. Getting there, the attendant tells them it is split between boys and girls, and the girls begin to feel that they will be looked at by the boys, but the boys assure them they would not. But, as soon as they get to their dorm, the boys begin to prepare to peep at the girls naked, as they begin to wear a mask that they have prepared so as not to be labeled as bad students. 
Then they hand Noor one of the masks also, but he remembers what the girls told him before and tells them he will not be a part of their scheme and begins to run away from them. They pursue him as he runs out of the building towards the bath. While he runs, he begins to think of a way to stop them. But he sees Elna, who forms a wall to stop the boys. Elna thinks Noor is part of the boys planning to go over to see the girls, but he tells her he also wants to stop them. Suddenly, the other boys wake up and begin to charge towards the bath, but Noor and Elna immediately use their power to stop them. Jorth, one of the boys, then stands up and plans to fight Noor and Elna so as not to stand in their way. The boy begins with giving Elna a blow that makes her fall back, but she is caught by Noor on her huge cannons. Elna then tells him she will forgive him and asks him to remove his hands from her cannons. He immediately apologizes for his mistake. And then, they realize Jorth has taken up more power to make himself very strong just to see his classmates naked. He tries to convince Noor to join him, but he refuses and tells him that he cannot see his classmates return to creation because of his selfish desires. They begin to fight and Noor uses one of his skills to weaken him and throws him on the floor. Another of his classmates also wakes up and begins to run towards the bath to see the girls but Noor tries to stop him and chases him to the bath and he ends up using a lot of life points, which weakens him. He ends up in the bath and sees that the girls have not started bathing as they have been warned by their teacher, and they all see that he kept their promise. Weakened from using up lots of his life points, trying to stop his classmates, Nor passes out, and the girls go after him to save him. Later when he wakes up, he notices he is in the bathroom with the girls, which they say is as a reward for keeping his promise, which surprises him as the girls begin to thank him. Emma, seeing that Noor has lost a lot of life points, begins to rub her cannons on his face and asks him how it feels. Elma also joins in while the other students begin to watch. Then, Noor sees that his life points have surprisingly surpassed 10,000. Noor and his family are getting ready to open their shop and Lola is helping out with moving items since she is very strong. Meanwhile, Luda notices that Lola is doing it all so that she can get down with Noor and begins to pull her away. Suddenly, Emma comes in and notices a potion on the table, which Noor tells them is edible and they can have a taste. The girls have a taste and realize it is very delicious, while Noor remembers it is from the dungeon where he gets his artifacts from. Then his father comes in to tell them he is done handing out the flyers. At that moment, they see that it is almost time and begin to panic on opening the shop for the first time. They begin to count down and they immediately open the doors of the shop. Noor's father is amazed to see so many customers, which makes Noor tell his father that this happens because they promoted the store so well and sees that he has come a long way, giving thanks to his master. Later, Noor goes to see Olivia and tells her that he would like to thank her by freeing her from the chains and suffering she is going through, and begs her to allow him. Wanting to make his master smile again, he was out to summon the great sage, asking him how he can save his master without killing her and the sage tells him that the answer he seeks is on the 15th floor. Immediately, Noor regains his consciousness. He gets a stronger headache, and he realizes that the tougher the question, the worse it gets for him. To get his answer, he goes to the 14th floor where he sees an instruction that tells him where to go if he is alone, which he sees will be a trial. He follows the instructions by following the number one path, which leads him to a tiny bridge that has spikes. He is instructed not to use any skill for his journey which gets worried. However, he leaves the dungeon and goes back to talk to Emma about everything, asking her for help and takes her to the hidden dungeon. He tells her the password to the door, and Emma sees that the password looks like his life's motto. Since he is not alone, he goes down the number two path where he sees a door and thinks a monster will be inside. He opens the door, but it is empty. They enter and see that the door behind them is locked as they see a lot of dwarves coming towards them, who ask them to drop their weapons and give them some food. Nor uses his powers to produce some cookies for them, which they find delicious. Their leader, while eating the cookies, immediately asks Emma to wink like a pig so that they can laugh. Nor begs her to do it, and she does but they do not find it funny, which angers her. The leader then asks for more cookies, but Nor uses his abilities to bestow a poison on the cookies, and takes them out so that they can be on their way. They continue in the dungeon and go down some steps with a clue they can use to save their master. Then. Noor enters a room and sees his master. He goes close to her, uses his eyes to check her powers, and realizes that the girl in Olivia's form is the actual death chain that holds Olivia. Then he reads an instruction that says to free her without killing her and a path will appear. That moment, 
Emma frees her, while Nora tells her that she is the death chain and there is no need to pretend. Suddenly, they begin to fight, and as Nora sees that killing her would set his master free, he tries to use a stone bullet, but she kicks it away, which makes them realize she is strong. Then the death chain tries to use a fire dragon to kill Nora, but he dodges it, and notices that it is very persistent. The death chains attack Emma and Nora, as she suddenly tries to use her powers on them, but Nora uses his elevator skills to teleport them to where Olivia is. Seeing them, Olivia becomes angry when she sees Emma with Nora, and asks who Emma is, he immediately explains that Emma is his childhood friend whom he had told her about. Meanwhile, Emma is scared because the death chains is using Olivia's body and Olivia immediately tells them that she already knows what is going on. Emma asks what her weaknesses are, so they would be able to know how to attack the death chains, but Olivia ignores her question and asks for the size of her rice cake bags. Seeing that Emma is confused, Olivia tells her that she wants to know, just because she notices that Emma's melons are bigger than hers. However, Olivia also tells Nora that he should stay away from the death chains because of its powers, but Nora asks her why she is being nice to him, as he has not been able to repay her for all she has done for him, but she keeps mute. Later, Nora and Emma leaves the dungeon, and on their way home, Emma tells Nora that she would talk to some of her parents' friends, who are historians, so that she can try to get whatever Olivia's weaknesses are. Nora tells her he would also go to find out about Olivia the following day. However, Nora thanks Emma before they part ways and heads to his shop that is not opened yet. Getting there, he opens the door and meets Luna and Lola arguing, but they both stop and Lola asks him why he looks exhausted. But before he could answer, she immediately thinks it is because he is lacking life points, which Nora tries to explain to the ladies that he is just tired, but instead, they begin to whisper things into each other's ears. Suddenly, Lola and Luna immediately grabs Nora. The following day, Nora visits the library and reads about a huge fight between Olivia and a cleric, which she won. He learns of a skill called Sacrifice, possessed by the cleric, which gave Olivia a hard time. Nora goes out and tries to practice the skill of using Sacrifice, but he also learns that he has to give up some of his skills to use the skill. On his way home, Nora meets the Death Chains on the bridge and when he asks why she is following him, she tells him that her job is to defeat any intruder on the 15th floor. The Death Chains also asks Nora why he wants to save Olivia, and he tells her that he wants his master to be free after being trapped for 200 years. The Death Chains informs Nora of how she makes Olivia go through pains, which gets Nora very angry and decides to defeat the Death Chains once and for all. Nora faces the Death Chains who is using Olivia's body, and he immediately sacrifices some of his skills so as to use the ultimate sacrifice power. He tries to attack the Death Chains but she uses the sword with her to pierce through Nora's chest. Nora tries to be strong but suddenly begins to feel a surge of lightning in his body, and when he uses his eyes skill, he is able to see how powerful the sword with the Death Chains is. The Death Chain moves closer to Noor, and when she is about to hit him, he immediately calls out to Olivia, his master, who begs him not to die on her. Then, Olivia shows how she had rejected a boy 200 years back, and how the boy meets her in a bar where he tells her he would like to be her student. Then, she begins to wonder the kind of gut the boy has for him to approach her in such manner. But the boy keeps begging to be her student, and she sends him away by telling him that she is not good at teaching. The boy begins to follow her anywhere she goes as he begs her to teach him so that he can get stronger. However, she keeps telling him she cannot be his master. The boy follows Olivia until she stops him and tells him to attack her right in the middle of the city, and if he is able to give her a scratch, she would be his master. But as the boy draws his sword, Olivia jumps up and stands on the blade of the sword. She dismisses the boy and tells him he is not ready to be an adventurer because he is not skilled. She also adds that he should give up being an adventurer, which makes the boy so disappointed. After being insulted, the boy does not still give up as he continues to follow Olivia until she begins to tell him about some creatures she knows about. Olivia becomes impressed on how dedicated the boy is, and whenever he calls her master, she would tell him not to. One night, Olivia sits in the bar waiting for the boy as usual, but the bar attendant tells her that they all heard the news that the boy is dead as he was defeated by an iron goblin. Olivia immediately rushes to where he is being laid and a man she met there tells her that the boy saved his daughter from the iron goblin, as he was able to use his sword to pierce the eye of the goblin in order to make his daughter escape. Olivia becomes sad as she begins to blame herself for not teaching the boy properly, 
which makes her tell herself that she should have accepted when he begged to learn more and become stronger. Having told Noor this story, Olivia adds that the boy she turned down looked like him, and when they met for the first time, she gave him her powers so that she would not feel the guilt she felt a long time ago. But she also begs him that he should be strong, and not died, so that she would be able to see his smiling face again. Hearing all this, Noor tries to stand up, but as he stands up, the death chains tell him that he would die once she hits him with her sword. But as she tries to hit him, Emma uses her power to push the death chain away. Noor gets surprised on seeing Emma, alongside Lola, Luna, and Layla, one of their companions. Then, Luna uses her healing guns to heal Noor, and the ladies decide to take on the death chain, trying to defeat her. Noor warns them of how powerful the death chain is, but Emma reminds him of how he has helped them, and they have all decided to help him. The ladies begin to attack the death chain, who make fun of them. However, as Emma clashes her sword against the death chain, Emma becomes weak as she also feels the surge of lightning in her body. Noor tries to help the girls but realizes he is yet to recover. Then the moment the death chain tries to hurt Emma, Lola saves her by throwing huge barrels at her. Seeing this, Noor cautions her as he notices that the bridge might collapse if Lola continues. Noor also instructs Luna to heal Emma and Lola, while he thinks of how they can defeat the death chain. Immediately, Noor uses his editor skills to destroy the sword, while he tells Layla to use her demon fist to hit the sword. Finally, the sword breaks and Layla tries to hit the death chain, who immediately jumps up and uses a skill to hit Layla. Seeing this, Noor stands up to check Layla but suddenly, Luna also falls down, and Noor realizes that the death chain is the one doing something to the girls. Angry, Noor decides to fight with the death chains but then realizes that she is messing with his skills, as all of the attacks he is making towards her are returning back to him. Looking at his friend's faces, Noor gets determined that he would make sure he defeats the death chain monster because of his friend and also to free his master. To do this, Noor sacrifices all of his other skills except the ones Olivia gave him. Then he uses his sword to hit the body of the death chains, but he is unable to pierce through it. After much thinking, Noor uses a huge effect, and while tapping from the death chain's power, he uses his sword to hit the body and immediately the death chains turn to dust. Having exhausted his powers, Nora gets tired, and when the ladies go to meet him, he tells them he is fine, but he only has 200 light points left. The ladies immediately go to meet him, and they all offer him their rice cake, in order to increase his life points. Did you pray today? Which help eventually increased up to 10,000. Nora returns to the dungeon to check Olivia and realizes that she is free from the chains, but he runs out to check her, and when he sees her, he becomes emotional and immediately hugs her. Nor asks Olivia why she did not tell him that she was in pain, to which she tells him that she did not want him to be worried. Olivia begins to play with Nor's face and tells him how long she has been longing to touch his face, and they both thank each other. Later at Nor's shop, Alice asks him where he got the fruits from and to which he tells her he got it from his friend. Nor also takes lessons from Layla, who teaches him how to fight, but while she teaches him, he feels her melons resting on his back, which also excites him. Lola sees this and immediately tells Noor that she is not aware that he needs to gain more life points and quickly goes to place her own melons on his body. Luna comes and also does the same thing, but Emma comes and tells Noor that he should always tell her first if he needs life points. Emma suddenly kisses Noor and suddenly, they hear Alice yell at them for fighting for her post with Noor. If you have watched this recap till now, you'll definitely enjoy the story of Kiaru, who is an incredible yet disgusting loner with the power to heal any being. Hellbent on revenge against some enemies from his past life, who made his life unbearable, he is ready to do anything to make them pay. Want to know more? Check out our last recap and find out.